Yeah, yeah. Now I'm talking about young yeah. shakes. Yeah. I don't you represent yeah. Jesse James. And this for my city. Hey, hey, I do it for my city. Hello, this is Lacey L. Rice Jr. of Rice Fame Group. Welcome you to Chat with HBCU Champions Season 2, Episode 15, featuring head coach David Oliver from Howard University, whose women track and field team won the 2023 MEAC Championship. Congratulations once again, Coach, and welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, you know, it was a great 2023, uh, 2022, 2023 academic year for the uh, for the women's team. So uh, very proud of that group. Yes. Um, so this is your fourth championship. You won the uh, MEAC cross country, the NA, the NEC and MEAC indoor um, track and field for women and the MEAC outdoor track and field for women. So that's that's a great that's a great <laughs> that's a great year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, four yeah four uh four championship trophies is a is a is a pretty good uh haul. Um, so like I said, I can't couldn't be more proud of uh, of the student athletes and their dedication and the hard work that they put in and. You know, of course, the doesn't happen, you know, in a vacuum, of course, with the administrative support and everything else that we receive, we're able to, you know, always kind of perform to the best of our ability. So definitely a, a lot of uh, a lot of people and a lot of efforts went into, you know, this great campaign we had. OK. And you are the first person. Who we have had on twice in the same season. So congratulations for that accomplishment. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that, that's good too. You know, it's, it's always great, you know, being here with you, <laughs> Lazy. You know, you always uh, got great content, and uh, it's always a good conversation. So, you know, hopefully we'll be back here in the fall. Uh, you know, hopefully after we can win another championship in uh, in cross country or something. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, for those who are not familiar with you, uh, can you please introduce yourself? And, and last time you did, you, you spoke mainly about your athletes and about your team. Uh, this time we want to know a, a bit more about you. So <laughs> because you, you are one of the United States greatest uh, uh, 110 hurdlers ever. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and you converted over into being a coach now so please take this time talk about yourself <laughs> <laughs> well i don't think i'm really that good about talking about myself in a public forum and, and stuff man you know it's uh um you know i guess in the age of the internet it stuff's always out there for everybody to kind of gather up the the information but you know since, since you insist that you know we want to gear gear this towards uh more about myself then you know we we can go that route although i kind of in a coaching role, I, I rather kind of deflect that attention to the student athletes because at the end of the day, they're the ones out there, uh, you know, lining up, lacing it up, you know, uh, on their own. You know, I, I'm in the crowd like everybody else. There's a reason why I had a track meet. There's, you know, eight lanes, but, you know, it's 30,000 people in the crowd. So only only eight only eight brave people can tow that line. But, um, you know, yeah, just, uh, you know, I had a great career myself. Uh, You know, it started at Howard University, which is what's always great is, uh, you know, it's having a full circle moment, uh, being able to kind of sit in the same chair with the same responsibilities that uh, my coach, Michael Mayer, which was who was a you know great man, great individual, um, you know, who kind of was a springboard and catalyst for everything that came, uh, you know, post my high school graduation, you know, through my adult uh, life, you know, he's had a a major impact and a major hand in. So, um, you know, every day sitting in the office and, you know, glance over to my left and I see the picture of myself and uh, and him uh, just uh, there after I won my first uh, MEAC championship in the hurdles my freshman year, uh, you know, just at the end of the meet, it's like, you know, it just means more. 
Uh, but yeah, just was able to come to Howard and, and really, uh, you know, put my imprint on on the conference, on, on the school and, and, and things of that nature on, on the sport at the collegiate level. Um, and, you know, got the, the opportunity to go to the next level, which uh, led me to Orlando, Florida with another great coach in, in Brooks Johnson. And my career just went to another level. Um, but I think that that happened because of the fact that I was at Howard University as an undergraduate and experienced all the things that I did here. And, um, you know, it just you just I think we don't take anything for granted here. And one thing that I do know is that being great or just having success, things of that nature, it's not any of our birthright to be able to do that. So, um, you know, so that's just one thing that I that I live with uh, just through my undergraduate, you know, my professional career and now as a coach. So, uh, yeah, and was able to win a lot of stuff, you know, represent the United States a bunch of times, run some fast times, win win medals, a lot of accolades and, and things of that nature. But. And that just kind of circled back around to me being here as the director of track and field, uh, you know, upon my retirement from the elite level. So, you know, I'm a big believer in timing and, and things of that nature. And, you know, I, I, I might have been retired for maybe a, a week or two before, I, you know, I got a, a phone call about the opportunity here um, at Howard. And it's like, wow, you know, this must be what I'm meant to be doing in, uh, in my next uh you know, the next iteration of my professional career is now on the uh, collegiate coaching level. And that's just been, you know, a lot of joy. Um, and I think there's a lot of maturing as well, you know, happens because I spent my whole adult life pretty much. That only thing that mattered was myself. That's it. You know, our individual sport. I did kind of what I wanted at whenever, you know, I only really answered to you know, kind of myself and, and what I wanted in my whims. But, you know, now when you're taking charge of a of a men's and women's program where you have 50, 60 athletes that are looking to you for the guidance or that you have to make sure are, you know, OK or have what they need and things of that nature, um, you know, really does lead to a little bit more, um, you know, just mental maturation, even no matter, no matter what age you are, you know, I'm 35, 36 years old at the time. So, um, really learned a lot about myself, my capabilities, um, what I'm able to do, uh, more of my strengths and weaknesses. So it was really, it's really been great, um, being back here, um, and able to, uh, be a change maker for the next generation of leaders that this great university is producing. Okay. Okay. So, how was that um, overall for you, you know, because cause you went from being that pro athlete, like you said, you, you didn't really have any time to rest mm -hmm. <laughs> before, you, before, before you received that coaching job and, mm -hmm. and you didn't really have coaching experience behind you. How was that transition? Uh, well, the transition was – it wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be. I mean, it's, it's going to be tough, of course, like I mentioned, dealing with, you know, 50, 60 athletes. You know, if each one of those people have a problem, then that means that you have 50 or 60 problems yourself as the as the coach. Uh, so, you know, that part, you know, is a little bit difficult. But, um, yeah, it just wasn't that that difficult because, I like I, I said earlier, you know, having the support of, of the administration and, and things like that was um, – it makes everything so much easier. Uh, you know, the coaching side, yeah, you know, you kind of know what to do and you, you know, the programming, things like that, but you have to have the, uh, the talent. And then at that time we, or we really didn't have kind of the, the talent that we'd kind of needed to get to the championship level that we've reached over the past couple of seasons. But uh, we were, so we were able to all grow at, at the same time. I could grow as a, a coach, and you know kind of as a mentor uh to the student athletes and and we could grow the program at the same time so um you know i came in with one idea and i was like yeah this may be a little too advanced for what we have right now um you know as far as the talent standpoint but uh, so i just treated it like a kind of a glorified aau program my first couple years you know so we just i just ran it just like uh, so I have a lot of contacts in the coaching ranks and things like that that really just helped me and and that really honed and sharpened my skills as a as a coach. So 
Um, I think we just were all able to grow at, at, at the same time. Um, I think our athletic director, Kerry Davis, had um, only been here for a short period of time before I had ar arrived and uh, he hired me. And um, if you look at our athletic department as a whole, um, you know, say uh, 2016 range to where we're at now in, in, in 2023, um, you know, it's kind of night and day across the board in uh, a lot of our sports here. So, I um, mean, he was at the helm of that as well as uh, Dr. Frederick, our, our now departing president. But, you know, they they really raised the standard here, brought in a lot of uh, coaches that, you know, expect to raise the standard. And, you know, we've all kind of uh, done a great job. But like I said, nobody, nobody gets there on their own. We're always standing on other people's backs and using the assistance of other people as well. So, um, like I said, just very thankful. And, uh, yeah, and the program's grown and, you know, now – pretty dialed into what I need to do from a coaching standpoint. And, and now we're getting that talent that I, that I mentioned that we needed and we're showing the results. Okay. And, and you mentioned something very important um, about the support that you received from your administration and, and your, uh, especially from your AD and that's paid off this year. Um, with, you know, you mentioned all the coaches that who have come through and, and I've interviewed quite a few of them, <laughs> so which uh, actually resulted in Howard winning the MEAC. Um, I don't know what they call it, but I know in, in other conferences they call it the Commissioner's Cup. Oh, yeah, like the All Sports uh, Award. Uh, yeah, I think the women is the Mary McLeod Bethune Award. And the men, I, I'm not – I can't – I don't recall what the uh, – what the award, uh, what the name of the award is, but yeah, we, we won that, um, which that's, uh, I mean, that's big, you know, when you're basically saying that you're the best, uh, you know, the best athletic program in the conference, that's, that says a lot on the men's and women's side, because I believe we won the women's side last year. Okay. But yeah, that so that 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 speaks volumes for your your athletic leadership there at Howard, and uh, you know have to take our hats off to um, your athletic director, and as you know as, as well as yourself because you were able to defend your title, and yeah. that's not an easy feat. Yes, it's it's t it's tough because um, you know it's just like as an athlete, you know when you're working your way towards being the best and into the top of the the mountain. Um, you know, you, you, nobody really kind of sees you come in or things of that nature, but, uh, when you're at the top, everybody's shooting for, for your spot. So, um, and that's what's, imp what was impressive about the, the women this year is that they knew everybody was coming for them. They had nobody's, they're not sneaking up on anybody. And, um, we were able to go out there and, and set the conference record for the, uh, most amount of points scored indoor and outdoor at the championship. So they even raised their game up another notch from the previous season. So um, it's, 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 like I said, testament to them. Uh, I instill in them a lot of, you know, what I believe is I just love winning. That's the stand. I mean, that's what you join athletics for, in my opinion, is winning. Uh, you, that's, that's what you have to shoot for and that's what you have to strive for. Um, but I can only teach the student athletes what to do, when to do and, and how to do something the want to to get that done always has to be provided for by them, you know, because I can't want it for you because I, I have no more eligibility, <laughs> you know, so you you have to do this. I I, I tell them all the time. I'm just the, the GPS unit. You know, I, I just I, you say this where you want to go. I give you the directions to get there, but you have to drive the car. You know, this is not like, uh, you know, other sports where you call plays for them or call timeouts or things that nature is like, now, nah, once you hit the line and they call, it's time to go. You got to be ready to go no matter what. Right. And, and that, that's very important. And, and I know, uh, you know, one of the things too, as a coach, and, and I would imagine it was easier for you than it is, than it would be for a coach who did not attend the institution, um, where they're coaching, you know, um, you're able to instill in your athletes what it means to be a bison mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, what, you know, what the expectations are of being at the Mecca. And so, you know, I, the, the results have shown, <laughs> the, yeah. the results have definitely shown. 
And so uh, are they are they at that point where now they can go out and maybe re- help recruit other athletes to your program, you know, letting them know that, hey, you know, we have this standard. Our coach is this type of coach. This is a standard that he sets for us, but this is also the standard that we set for ourselves. Are, are they able to do that at this point? Uh, absolutely. Uh, the best re- tool, uh, recruiting tool that you have um, are the current student athletes that are um, on your team. And, you know, we have some really, really good ones um, on both sides and they do a really good job of, uh, you know, of course, in this age where they're all friends and everybody talks and, um, you know, they're they're able to kind of show and then they produce the results. You know, we have a lot of people on our team that have transferred to our program from other uh, great institutions and and they're doing better here than they did at those uh, kind of power five type programs and. Um, and they're like, oh, shoot, well, maybe I I should look into Howard University and the track and field program. And that has really led to a, a strong influx of, of talent, you know, this this year uh, uh, with the group of student athletes that we have uh, coming in this fall. It's um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to make my job, you know, a, a, a lot harder. I feel, um, you know, at the conference meet, we only have about 25, 26 athletes that we can enter in. And you look at the roster and it's like, man. I'm going to have to disappoint, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of people, you know, potentially if, if, if everything goes kind of how it's been trending towards. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, but, but they do a good job and that's what we want to do. We want to build a program. That's one of the glorious things about track and field and, and other kind of individual sports within a team aspect. Uh, you're not beholden to, you know, a, a constricted schedule or, uh, things of that nature. You, you know, we have a national schedule, and so student athletes that are prospective uh, enrollees, they see that and they're like, "Oh, I like that. Oh, yeah. So I, you know, I'm going to be able to get to be on the big stages and be seen and and uh, increase my exposure, things of that nature." Um, so, yeah, we're we're able to just kind of get it done. So I'm I'm really excited and uh, you know really looking forward to seeing how things turn out. The, you know, in a year from now, what we're talking about, hopefully that means us being, uh, you know, kind of top 25 program in the uh, NCAA. That will be, uh, that's the short-term goal for us here. Okay. Well, uh, please tell us about your team. Who are some of your key athletes and some of their accomplishments? Um, well, you, you just mean for 23, 24, or currently, you know, this past season or kind of which? This past season, mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. This past season, uh, you know, on the women's side, we were led by Jessica Wright that, uh, you know, she's, uh, you know, four time all American now and, you know, has records in the conference records in the outdoor 400 meter hurdles and just been a really, uh, you know, she was the first recruit that I, uh, ever called when I got here on, on the job. So, um, you know, she's graduated of course, and, you know, now she's got her prospects for the next level, uh, yeah, so she's just, uh, you know, really a, a great story and it's, uh, you know, unfortunate to see her go, but, you know, uh, at some point in time, we all have to have to go and it's been a great run and, and she really was the, uh, one of the kind of main cogs in the, uh, change that, uh, the program undertook, uh, after myself and my staff's arrival. Um, Darcy Khan was, uh, uh, will be back. She was, a uh, you know, made all American this year. Uh, she, uh, transferred into our program as a hundred meter hurdler and, you know, she's got all the school records in the 60 hurdles, 100 hurdles, the open sixties, just really come here and really flourished and, and, uh, and developed really well. So it'll be great to see how, how a uh, year or two goes for, uh, for her in the program. Uh, Kyra Dunbar in the 100 hurdles, another person that made it to the uh, NCAA level um, in, in the hurdles and ran a couple of personal bests out there um, when we were at the, in Jacksonville for the first round in the quarterfinals. So, um, you know, just the, you know, the hurdles is always going to be something that we do really well. You know, we have a strong freshman hurdler, Nia Woodruff, who made it to the NCAAs as a freshman this year. And, uh, yeah, it's just so many. <laughs> we have so many really good uh uh, uh, just people on the team, Tiffany Ray Pittman, who won the four by one, the four by four, the hundred and the 200 at conference this year as a sophomore. 
um, you know, taking the mantle up from Jessica Goodbye, who did the same for us the previous year at the conference level. And so she's the sophomore this year. And it's, uh, yeah, it's just so many of them in the field events and just, just all around, you know, we've done a good job building an all around type program. So uh, those that just to, to name a few that kind of made it to the national level and uh, looking forward to adding more to that uh, next year. Okay. All right. So um, tell us uh, a bit about your conference and the competition that you face this year. Uh, well, the conference is, you know, traditionally strong. I think the track and field, of course, is the best sport in the Mideastern Athletic Conference. Just when we're talking about on a national scene, if you're just looking through the throughout history uh, from, you know, when Coach Moultrie had the Howard program in the 80s and, you know, being nationally ranked and doing those things and with uh, Coach Pearson at, at Hampton and, you you know, uh, even with Ross at when a, with A&T, uh, you know, all these uh, – uh, you know, kind of coaches and, and programs that have just been through the conference track and field is, I believe, is our cornerstone sport in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference when it comes to grabbing uh, attention um, from on a national scene. Uh, you know, we have a, like Norfolk State, such a strong program. You know, they've won so many conference titles over the past decade or so, led by Kenny Giles. He's just, you know, done an awesome job there. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a strong conference. Uh you know, but I feel like on our on the women's side for us that I think that we will be able to kind of uh, be able to maintain kind of what we've developed here because as a coach, you just can't allow it to slip, you know, because it's as easy as you as you, you know, well, I won't say easy, but as as kind of quickly as we got here, you know, in all honesty, it didn't really take that long to kind of turn things around these other coaches are working and they're working hard as well and recruiting hard, coaching hard. They're very good coaches. So you're going to turn around and look up like, Oh my goodness, you know, uh, you know, a championship last year that we scored X amount of points and you look up and somebody else is, you know, beating you going into the four by four on the last day. And you're like, Oh my goodness, what happened? So you just can never rest on, on our laurels and um, just think that we've got everything uh, in the bag and the bases covered because the same way that we were, finishing last place at conference and things like that. When I first got here, you fast forward four, four years later, you know, we're able to, you know, be the champions and, you know, send a bunch of people to the NCAA level. There's coaches, like I said, in our conference that are really good and they'll, they have the capabilities to do the exact same. So I think about it all the time. Like I don't want to get caught slipping and, and, you know, I, I, we've worked hard to get to this point and we don't want to just kind of give it away. Um, you know, we, if they take if they take it from us, that's different. You know, they earn it. But we just can't give it away. So I just think about it all the time. I don't want to just get get caught slipping. You know, <laughs> I don't blame you. I definitely don't blame you. Uh, well, tell us more about your uh, your postseason this year. Uh, well, yeah, so you had the, uh, you know, uh, first round out down in Jacksonville after the conference championship. Uh, you know, we have a program record of 14 entries that, uh, um, that, that qualify for that meet, which is outstanding. You know, we had men jumpers and hurdlers and sprinters and, you know, relay. It, it was just, it was really good step forward on, on the men's side for us, I feel. You know, of course, the meet wasn't perfect, but the simple fact that you can look up and you see where we have entries, like I said, the 110 hurdles, our four by one made it, the triple jump, you know, with Chase Drury and uh, you had Ashton Daniel in the uh, 200, you know, it's just things that we don't have a track record of, uh, you know, kind of doing well, especially all at one time, you know, on the women's side, you know, we of course had, you know, the 200, 400 hurdles, short hurdles, four by four, um, you know, things like that. So, um, you know, it was, it was a really good meet, got some personal best out of there. Um, had, a about three events qualified to the, uh, to the finals out in Texas. And so, you know, like I said, had six, uh, all American certifications at, at the end of the, at the end of this season. So, um, you know, I always try to acknowledge them and I go down to, to the locker room area and I saw the, you know, banners there and it's like, wow, you know, the past from 2021 to, to 2023 and those three seasons, you know, we've, we've had produced about 12, you know, I think 12 or two, maybe even 16 all American certificates. I can't even remember in those, those three, uh, three years. So like I said, in the previous question, 
you know, he worked hard to kind of get to this level and not really going to do anything to, to kind of throw it away. It's just as it feels good when you're going and your season's ending at the national level and you're out there battling with the best teams in the country, um, you know, for the same prize at the end. And um, so now we have the USA championships, um, you know, we have a lot of people qualified for and uh, the U20 championships where we have a couple of athletes and uh, yep. So then, that, you know, the season's kind of, uh, you know, finally wrapping up a bit, but to your point, you know, earlier as an athlete, you don't have a, a lot of time to rest, but I mean, it's the same as a coach when your, your program is uh, successful. Uh, you know, the, the once the one season ends, it almost just rolls right into the, the next season. So, um, yeah, I, I wasn't a fan of the season ending first week of, of May at the uh, conference championship. You know, that's, that's not anything I look forward to, to doing when the rest of the, the big dogs are out there, you know, playing and running and stuff. I want to be a part of that too. So, um, yeah, like I said, we worked hard to get here and we're going to do our best to make sure we keep that rolling. Okay. So how, uh, as far as your conference, how is, uh, the entry process? Um, how many are, I, I know there are some conferences, that uh ha that have you have to meet standards there are other conferences that maybe you can only put you know two and then the one relay there are there are other conferences where you can put you know almost as many as you want and 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 then you know one relay what is uh what's the MEAC like um i think we have a great uh uh, kind of qualifying standard type of uh, setup that was implemented uh, after COVID. Um, you know, of course, we still have the travel roster, which every conference you have to stay within that that travel roster. So I think 26 people, but in them 26, you you can enter up to four people in each event. But if you want, or maybe it's three, three people in each event. But uh, if you want to enter more, then they have to reach a qualifying standard which, you know, I, I, I do like that because, you know, if you just want to be focused on nothing but the sprints and the qualifying and say, you you know, it's 24-2 or something in the 200 and you got 10 women that are running faster than that and you want to put all 10 of them in there, hey, go for it. That's your prerogative, you know. The, the coach should be, you know, coach what you kind of want to enter in. If that's what you want to do, you want to put 10 people in the 800 or whatever, yeah, all of them can't score, so – Maybe that's not that wise, but if that's what that's up to you as the coach, you got to be able to kind of maneuver and to manipulate and, and uh, you know, kind of your roster how you want to. Um, so, yeah, that's why I think you know, we're going to be a speed power uh, program here. And so we're going to have a lot of people that are going to be doing 60 to 100, 200, you know, the hurdle events. Uh, jumps and things of that nature. So I, I'm, I'm glad we don't only get to enter three people in because I'd be able to have a lot of upsets as student athletes. Because <laughs> they're like, Coach, I, I can't go to the conference meet, but, you know, I, I can make it to the NCAA first round or something. It's like, yeah, right. you know, you're fourth on the depth chart here, but, you you know, you made it to the NCAAs, but you're just not in the top three in the program here. But, I mean, I guess it's a good problem to have. So, um, but I, I do like the qualifying setup we have. Right. And, and and I I had to ask that because as as I, I of course was an assistant commissioner on the NAIA level and we ran into that I was over track and field and we ran into that that they had a program uh, when I came in one of the programs won a national championship but the uh, and they had just joined the conference. And the, the program that was the power program before then, you know, they were able to win, keep winning conference because they had over 100 something athletes. And so they were able to, like you said, able to enter 10 people. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a roster limit and you only, I mean, a travel roster of 26 people and you want to put 10 of them in, that means you only got 16 to go in all the other 20 events in the sport. So if that's what you want to do, that's on you, you know, it right. doesn't seem very wise, but yeah, yeah, with those type of programs with a hundred some people on the roster, yeah, you just, all you got to yeah, have a travel roster and, and travel limit. And that's uh, I think it would take care of a lot of uh, those type of issues. Yeah. Cause things did change once, especially once I came in and, and, and uh, convinced the coaches that we should, 
you know, hey, let's let's go down to three or four, you know, but you know, not as many people as you want to put in and all that. It was, and 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 the the one advocate of that was the defending national championship coach because he legitimately could have he had people qualifying so that he would have gotten the top five spots in most of the sprints and um and 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 that was the one thing he said to me you know hey this this does not work to my advantage but i'm for it because it helps the other programs you know be able to uh have some achievements and everything make it worthwhile for the other programs that are competing versus deflating their morale hey hey, hats off to that coach because he you know to me i feel like a championship is the best of the best right so if i have the best 10 people Mm. then if i want to put the best 10 people then the other team they got to step their game up Right. You know, this is, you know, like I sell my athletes, this is division one athletics. This is not recreational sports. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to, or intramurals, you want to be in charge, uh, you know, do that. However, we got plenty of intramurals or stuff like that. You can go join on your own, but this is division one athletics. This is the best of the best. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if I got the top five or something like that, you better believe I'm going to have all five of them in there running. You know, I don't, right. the other coaches just got to step their game up and then they can have the top five. I mean, we, like we had to, you know, when a and was in the program, I mean, in the conference, they would have the top. And I liked it because I just love watching people run fast. I mean, I'd love it if it was my kids, but I just like watching. I don't care whose kids it is. I love watching high performance stuff. Right. And they give you, and that's what you're, I sat there in those stands, you know, I, we might be scraping the bottom of the barrel back in 2018 or stuff, but I'd watch, you know, like, man, one day, you know, one day I'm going to be I'm going to be up here with and, and have about three, four people in the finals and they're going to run fast and get ready to go to nationals and do all this type of stuff, too. One day, you know, and that's a uh, you know, that's why I mean, Ross, he just that's the first guy I remember being at the conference championship that indoor my first uh, year here. And it was just I just it was just devastating just seeing how like sorry we were, you know, we scored one point and I was just sitting there at the end of the meet like I can't believe this. I. Like, he was like, hey, just don't worry about it. You know, you come from a high level background, so you'll have it turned around in no time. He's like, I, did, I went through the same thing. So, you you know, a high level track and field is you just got to stick to that. And then you'll, you know, you'll be in the same, you'll be in the same situation. And now we were right there in that landover. And I was like, and he was like yeah, yeah, I got to stick with that. Cause I was sitting there like, man, I don't know about this. This is embarrassing. You know what I'm saying? I never signed myself. I never signed my name into no sorry stuff before until right. that championship sitting there. And you got to scroll pages till you get to Howard or everybody. You have to scroll all the way to the bottom till you can see somebody from, from Howard coming up. And I was like, yeah, never again. Never again. You know, but right. I think back to the, that time, like, you know, and I think it's like I'm never going back to that. You know, I like I say, I think in life it's very important to know what you don't want to do as opposed to knowing what you think it is that you do want to do. And I know for a fact, I don't want to go back to that 2018, you know, uh, uh, era here, you know, I just, I, I'm just not going to do it. Right. And, and, and I, you know, that's very important. And, and uh, I've talked to some academic administrators and that's one of the things I've tried to, um, inform them about, you know, hey, this is what you want in athletics. You don't want it to develop a a culture of mediocrity because that permeates not only that permeates outside of your uh, athletic program throughout your academic program, mm-hmm. and, and then it also kills the support that your sports will get from the fans because you know the fans will get tired of watching mediocre things and so um you know i always tell them you need to you if you're hiring coaches you need to hire coaches who are used to winning or who can teach athletes how to win and not only out there on the playing field but also in the classroom because the studies show that 
athletes uh, uh, with the academic body, athletes tend to be the most successful after graduation. Yep. And so, uh, you know, you, you want to bring people in who, who are used to that, who are used to winning so that they can uh, breed that success within the program and, 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 and have those high expectations like you currently have. So that, that's great. <laughs> Yeah, we don't we don't accept mediocrity here at Howard University academically. Mm-hmm. We should not accept that in any avenue of anything that has to do with the university. And that's you know, I only speak at Howard. It's the only school I ever known. You know, whether it's undergrad now as a coach, things of that nature. So can't really speak to other programs, other schools, things of that that nature. But we never accept mediocrity when it comes to our academic standards and things of that nature. So the level should be high all the way around campus across the board and um you know i think like i said earlier dr frederick did a great job elevating the standard of everything and everybody um you know on campus so it's uh that's just great vibe being here and um but you're absolutely right um i i remember our athletic director uh carrie davis he just mentioned you know years ago one of the first head coaches meetings that i was in is how uh athletics is like the front porch to your university you know, people see that easily to access that maybe more so than the university. So what they see, if they see, you know, high level athletics going on and they assume rightfully so that everything else must be on point too. And, you know, now that we're here, fast forward, you know, to 2023 and you can definitely see the the vibe and the change around everything here um, at Howard. Okay. All right. That's, that's great to hear because like I said, it it's definitely has shown, and you know it, it it has shown not only with the um year in award but also with the caliber coaches like you know yourself uh coach blakeney you know won national championships as a as an athlete at duke mm-hmm. uh you know coach scott uh you know coach per year <laughs> you're talking about you're talking about people who not only did it um, as coaches, but before that, they were doing it as athletes. Right. So right. They, we've got a lot of championships, man, you know, from softball, women's basketball, uh, you know, like every, nearly all, all your kind of headline sports have, uh, you know, been winning. Volleyball is the standard bearer for championships around here. I think, you know, Coach Cup's been here. I'm not sure how many years, but I think they've won you know, six, seven championships in his time. And, you know, he was the one that, you know, was the genesis of of the winning culture pretty much. And, uh, you know, everybody's just kind of following suit. And now it's like, hey, you got to be, you got to be ring, you got to be bringing rings into the table, you know, at the end of the, at the end of the year around here, or or it might not have been that successful of a season for you. You know, that's, that's kind of the, the standard. And I, I like that because, um, you know, everybody just kind of get uh, gets along. Like I said, uh, Carrie did a great job with the, the hirings and and yeah, we're moving in a great direction, you know, as a football alum as well, you know, playing here uh, and seeing what Coach Scott's doing with the program. It's just like, man, this is great. Man. I, I really I would have loved to have played in, a, you know, in this kind of environment, uh, you know, with these guys um, and, and what they bring to the table as coaches. So. Um, it's just, it's just great to see. So, so, <laughs> so, uh, how competitive are you coaches against each other when it comes to that? <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't really think, I don't think maybe not much at all. I'm not sure. You know, everybody's almost in their, in their own silos and you just kind of mm-hmm. come out and you just kind of converse briefly or you send a shout out when you see them doing well or, or winning awards and stuff like that. But I mean, shoot, I think, all the coaches just uh, – Kerry got the uh, hardest job at the year-end award show to have to probably pick, like, the best coach of the, in, in the department or whatever uh, every, at the end of every year because, you know, about five, six, seven of us could, uh, you know, be deserving of winning. So, I mean, he's got the toughest job. But, uh, no, I don't think anybody's, like, a super competitive, I think, because we all just playing on the same team. You know, we – go out there the name is ringing out and, and you know with men's basketball winning and doing the stuff in the tournament women women's basketball last year winning and, and actually winning the game in the tournament uh last year it just really has a lot of uh 
has a lot of uh, just our name ringing out in great spaces. You know, having that the partnership now with Jordan Brand and Nike this year was the first year, and um, you know, the flagship sports for them winning the championships. That was just really, uh, I think it's just good timing. And you know, like I said earlier, timing is everything, and I think that we really uh, did a good job. Okay, and your job, I, I, I imagine it has to be one of the hardest. Uh, you know, because really during the academic year you're one of the few sports that well let me let me correct myself one of the few programs mm -hmm. that goes wire to wire i know yeah. you know um with me coaching the the, the one year i was on the um, d1 level at, at a major university they started in the in the in the summer before the students arrive with the cross country team mm -hmm. and of course ended after after everybody had graduated. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like I said, with Jenny, we had Jessica right here. She graduated like, you know, Mother's Day weekend in May. And, you know, it'll be two months later. And you know, she's still in the tower, still, you know, a student living the student athlete lifestyle, you know, but um that's just what happens when you're when you're great. Um and I don't think you could trade being great for anything. Uh, this is a fleet moment, you know, a fleet moment in time because you're never going to get this time back. You're never going to get this ability back. So it's almost you've got to take it as far as you possibly can go. Um, but, yeah, that's that's one of the part that the coaching that I was not really, you know, I wasn't, you know, I knew, OK, yeah, track season, this, that, and the third. But it's like I really didn't know. You know, we start practicing a couple weeks after school starts. And then, like, it's going into July and, you know, we're still going with a, with a group of athletes. So. It's, and then by the time we get done, the, the some you know freshman move in is is starting again, and then we're getting ready to um, go all over it. Like last year was the first year really experiencing that because we had a young lady uh, that qualified for the world championships, and we was just out here coaching through July and in, in, in preparation for that. And it's like, wow, man, I ain't, I got no break at all, and I'm hitting the ground running again. And here we are going on almost two years straight. <laughs> But I love it, though. That's the same thing as an athlete. You know, we uh, we take six weeks off at the end of the season and we get right back at it. So I'm um, just used to that kind of lifestyle. But, you know, it is important now. you got to start uh, taking some 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 time and, you know, getting some sort of, of break and get a, a breather because self-care is extremely important. If you're not taking care of yourself, then, you know, how can you take care of these student athletes and people like that that you're uh, responsible for um, as well? So that's why with the mental health stuff, it's key. It's huge. Um, you know, not only for like uh, the student athletes, but also for the the coaches. Uh, one of the first things when I came out here, um, yeah, I was at I was coaching cross country at first before uh, Coach Murphy got here, and we're at practice one day, and and then I'm just standing there, you know, getting the times, and then the, uh, one of the young ladies on the team at that time came over to me and just started crying, talking about she wasn't supposed to do cross country, and the other coach had her do it, but she was only supposed to be. Doing. I was like, oh my goodness. And then, you know, I was like, okay, cool. Well, we'll just, you know, just shut it down. You just train with the sprinters when we start with the sprinters. You don't have to do this anymore. And then, and I was like, whoa, man, I, I, all these people unloading on me. I don't have anybody to kind of unload uh, and just kind of talk stuff through uh, myself. So I just went right on down the, uh, you know, down the street here and got myself a, um, a, a mental health coach myself. And, you know, it didn't, that was like worked a lot. So it was just smooth to be able to, uh, you know, because I got all these stressors and, you know, stuff and I can just talk them through and somebody else can deal with it. Then that's their job. So, you know, it's uh, it's very important. So I'm, I'm very big on that. I wish we could make the student athletes go to see the, the you know, mental health coaches that we have here. And but uh, of course, you, you can't force anybody to do that. But it's just a resource that I, that I would like uh, uh, wish that all student athletes would really kind of take seriously. We do have a couple and I, I love it for them that they're uh, able to, to, to get that done and, and really be serviced. And you can always tell it's like night and day. You can always tell when you watch them coming in and you see, cause I'm with these, like I say, it's year round. I see them every day. I see these kids more than their parents do. I talk to them more than their parents do. And I know when they walk down them steps to come to practice when something's not right, you know, and then, so you get them to go out and talk to, to uh, Dr. Lisa, who's been a great uh, resource for us in um, athletics and, um, then you can always see, you know, a couple weeks afterwards and now they're back. The performances are there. 
you know, everything's kind of back to where, where, uh, where they were at. And, you know, it's just great, um, that you can, uh, that they can actually, you know, kind of help themselves. I wish everybody would take advantage of that. Nice. And, and, uh, coach Blakeney did mention that, um, Howard had a partnership with health and human services with the um, U S government. So, um, um, has that been a great asset for you? Uh, well, yes, absolutely. Like, we don't know. We can just only direct them uh, mm-hmm. down to the services. So not, I can't, I don't know who's utilizing it or, or, or not, but uh, they have the resources here. Um, you know, Howard's done a great job providing uh, the resources to the student athletes when it comes to the mental health uh, side of, uh, of everything, because being a, a student athlete on a division one level, is it's a lot, you know, the, there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of expectation. you got to balance the, you know, the athletic and the academic life. And, you know, you got to try to still, you know, get a little bit of social life going. And, and I know it's tough in the sport like track year round, you know, we don't have a lot of time to, there is no, oh, we, well, we just play the games in the fall, then the spring semester, you know, you kind of do what you want, focus in kind of whatever you just show up to practice and do our little, you know, spring ball or do a little uh, whatever. You know, nah, we're in season year round. So it's not really, so you, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of stress, but uh, yeah, I just, I try to direct them to, um, to the services and um, that partnership is great. Um, and I just hope that a lot more of our student athletes in the future will, will, will utilize that. Okay. Now, um, uh, can you please talk about some of the honors that you received this year? Oh, uh, well, yeah, so it's cool. You know, got the, uh, you know, indoor and outdoor conference uh, coach of the year on the women's side, uh, um, being recognized uh, again indoor and outdoor for the uh, the cross country or cross country the uh, United States uh, Coaches Association um, uh, being the Mid Atlantic Women's Coach of the Year. Um, you know, indoor and outdoor, which is always cool because that's voted on by your peers. You know, that's like so the people that are in your region, they vote for you for these awards. So it's kind of cool to see that people, uh, you know, notice what we do, what we've done with the program and, um, and we're just kind of the direction that we're moving in compared to kind of maybe where we came from. So, uh, you know, those are always cool. And then, um, you know, having the opportunity this summer to, uh, be a team USA coach, uh, for the, the NACAC U23, uh, championships that will be down in Costa Rica in uh, mid July. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's kind of crazy, honestly, too, you know, uh, because you got to, that's a committee. So people select you for, <laughs> you know, for that. I mean, everybody that's in track and field probably wants to be a team USA coach and for, you know, them to select me is like, wow, you know, it's kind of cool. Now I get to, you know, be a part of team USA. Um, you know, I ran, you know, probably six, six seven, eight championships as a athlete. And now, you know, being to uh, get it, get get it, in, get in it as the coaching on the coaching side is like, you know, it's kind of crazy. I say it's only been a handful of years, and you know, we get we're getting a lot of kind of accolades and, and and stuff like that. But to me, it's just like most things. I I just I like high level stuff, man. Mm-hmm. So I believe like that I I just should be able to to do this because I just work very hard to make it happen. You know. No matter what it did, whether as an athlete, coach, now I just do whatever I have to do in order to make it happen, because I don't want to be sorry. You know, I just I, I don't I don't want to be I don't know I don't want to be I, like I told you I think about that that championship in 2018 and I never I never want to really do that again or go through that again. So um, yeah, so I think I just it drives me. I'm all a very driven, uh, you know, very driven person. No matter what it is, I sign my name up to you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you exactly what it is that you asked for, a hundred percent. Okay. Um, can you talk a bit about your coaching staff? Oh yes, yeah, so coaching staff. That's the best thing you could do is like hire great people around you to, you know, to help because nobody does it on their own. You know, yeah, I might be coaching all this this kind of speed power events and stuff like that, but you know, we got a team full of jumpers, throwers, distance runners, you know, that really uh, um, make it happen. You know, so first and foremost, with Jessica Cousins, our associate head coach, who makes everything work, you know, because she, I came, I don't know anything about rules and all that stuff with NCAA. I just be coaching and 
whatever else. But she, oh no, we can't do that because yeah, now you can't be flying these people. That's illegal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She gotta. She's like, okay, everything got, goes through her. Whether it's where we, where we, what hotel we're going to, or you know, whatever. And she, you know, of course, is going to be, you know, coaching. And we have about 30, 34 people that, that are, you know, sprinters, hurdlers, stuff like that. So, you know, we we work that together because um, uh, you just one person just can't take on all that. Um, but, yeah, so she's been here the whole time. You know, she was the first call I made is when when uh, she had been at Howard previously under the previous regime. And, you know, she left and uh, went to a different school and. When I took over, I called her to see if she would come back and, um, you know, to somebody that knew the ropes and, you know, all the administrative stuff. Um, so, you know, she's very invaluable, you know, like, yeah, I might be the face and everybody's going to, you know, talk about, you know, myself or the, the coaching or, you know, things of that nature. But, um, yeah, it definitely wouldn't be possible without without her, um, you know, just as I'm saying from day one till, you know, now, just every step of the way, you know, she's seen every up and every down. So, um yeah, just yeah, can't let her go anywhere. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? I don't, I don't want to have to try to find uh, you know somebody else. But you know, of course, the program's doing great. You know, she's a great coach, great person. So you know, I'm pretty sure people will be uh, calling for her as far as um, you know to take a head coaching job at some point in time. You know, but it's going to be devastating. <laughs> it's going to be devastating. But like I said, with the kids, we all come and we all go at some point in time. We probably can't stay forever, but. Um, yeah, she's outstanding. And then, of course, my, my jumps coach, Frank Rivers, he, uh, you know, had, you know, worked with Chase Drury to get him to the national level, you know, producing gold medals there, uh, gold medals in the men's long and in, in, in indoor and outdoor with uh, with Sean Ray and done a great job with those uh, student athletes um, in that group. Uh, Danny Stokes in the death rows department produced tons of, of medals over the, the handful of years that, that he's been here. So, um did a great job there um and then you have a head cross country coach uh, damian morgan who um came in this past semester um that's you know really doing a good job on the recruiting trail and um you know getting that squad ready to see if we can uh the women can get out there and defend their title this uh upcoming fall and the men get over the hump and uh you know finally get us a, a championship on that side so got a great staff you know from i say from the, the top to the bottom uh, you know, I think I've done a good job putting together a, a, a team of winners and people that expect to win and have and come from a high level background to your point about people that, um, you know, I kind of expect to win, you know, cousins coming from the University of Arkansas, you know, ran on Team USA, did those things. She expects to win. She expects high level things. That's what she knows in track and field. Uh, same with, with Coach Morgan, you know, a, a national level uh, distance runner at, at Ole Miss you know, down in the SEC, so expects the same. Um, so, yeah, um, yeah, we got a great squad, work well together, so really excited for, uh, you know, just for the future. Hope we can, you know, keep everything together for a little while. Okay. Well, um, let's talk about your prospects. Um, what or – well, let me, let me, let me uh, go back. Let's talk about your prospects and your signees. Mm -hmm. So what do you look for in prospects and who are some of your major signees? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. Recruiting is almost like a, it's like a crapshoot. You just never know. Great high school athletes. They may not be that great in college. You just just never know. So my biggest thing is just try to identify what the mentality is. Um, yes, the times need to be in a certain uh, area, certain range. But I need to know what your mentality is, because. I don't, you got to come here knowing what the expectations are and ready to meet that, meet the challenge. Um, and so that's, that's what I kind of try to do more than anything. And I think, yeah, cause that, it just developed that the first, when I first got here, I just wanted to know oh, how fast is this person running and then, you know, they do well, but then they come here and I figure like, ah, nah, this person's not really work, doesn't work well with what I'm trying to do, my expectations. And they just happen to be fast in high school, but they're not really built for trying to like take this any further kind of, you know, if, if that makes sense. Um, they're just kind of content, you know, now nah, I want people that want to be like the absolute best that they can be. Nobody's saying you got to try to go pro or do all those things, but you got to come here one day, every single day to be like just the best. Mm -hmm. And if not, then you, I have no problem. We got it. We can move on. You know, it's, it's okay. Um, Cause it's mm -hmm. everything. It's not for everybody. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I think, you know, over, like I said, over the years, we've done a good job of kind of uh, getting those, getting more of those individuals in the program. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, this fall, I think we've got a great, a great uh, squad of, uh, of people uh, coming in. You know, I, I, I want to mention uh, many folks by name, you know, we haven't really released our, our, uh, our, uh, you know, kind of signees and things like that. And, you know, we're, right. you know, just getting more NLIs back and things like that now. So, um, but yeah, we do we have some, you know, really good group of, uh, of individuals. What I will say is that, um, you know, we revamped the, uh, you kind of men's hurdle side. Um, you know, of course, a lot of those guys graduated and, um, I don't think we'll miss a beat at all with, uh, with the people that we have coming in. Um, yeah, and the men on the women's side, it's it's going to be it's going to be really tough. Um, being a, if you like a sprinter uh, on the women's side, it's going to be I'm gonna have to it's going to be a, a bit of disappointing people like when if not being able to make like the eighteen four by one outdoors and, and things of that nature. So um, yeah, but I, I like and I don't think that I think us being able to score. We'll be able to score, uh, I think, close, at least double-digit points at the NCAA Outdoor Championships next year on the women's side. I think we have a, a team that is, you know, if, you know, everybody stays healthy with the folks that we got coming in and the, and the ones, um, you know, returning that. I think that that is a – that that's definitely a, something that's a, attainable for us. Okay. All right. Well, Coach, as we prepare to wind down – this is your time to give shout outs to anyone who you want to recognize. Oh, well, yeah, sh- you know, shout out. I think I've been shouting out everybody that's like really been a, a, a big key to, to, to everything, you know, um, that, that, that we're doing and that I'm able to do, but mainly, you know, it just starts from the top. Like I say, we, we, we carry here and, um, our, our compliance department with Paul and Randy, those guys in academics, you know, it's, it's so much, as you know, that goes into collegiate athletics that has nothing to do with the two hours a day that we spend on the track uh, training. You know, it's the 22 other hours where everybody's working hard to, to make sure we're on the same goals and, and working on the same planes. And, uh, you know, uh, A.J. Levy, our strength coach here, you know, got to give him a shout out. You know, we work really well together uh, organizing the plan for that. And, and you know, these the coaches, it's not just – the track coach, but the strength, he's here, he's going year round, just like we do, you know, the, the training staff, they got to go year round, <laughs> you know, just, they don't get a break either. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of, of keys, key components that help us get to where we, uh, where we need to go. And so, you know, just major shout out to all those people, Howard and the alumni that are really, uh, you know, just really excited for the program and really kind of supporting us and, it's uh yeah so I mean yeah big shout outs to all those individuals and and hopefully you know this is just the start of of hopefully we build a dynasty of, of track and field here at Howard. Okay, all right. Well, we want to thank you, Coach Oliver, for participating in this chat, and we hope that you and your program continue to succeed. And we will definitely keep following your developments. And we want to thank you, our audience for watching this episode of Chat with HBCU Champions. Please visit rightsfamegroup.org for more information on replays and more HBCU information. And have a blessed week. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm talking about young shakes. I want to represent this is Jay. And this is for my city. Hey, I do it for my city. I don't play on going. Watch me get it, get it all.
night. Planet flying top flight, higher than space stations. That's why I gotta grind, cause I need it and I hate waiting.